I'm Corinne. I'm Thomas. <laughs> Good morning and... I'm scared. No, I'm just kidding. Good morning and welcome to the Chill Spot. My name is Drake. And this is Corinne. Good morning. I was only scared because today we were going to talk a little bit about the fear of public speaking. Some reason, some ways that will aid you in public speaking. I myself, sometimes I get scared, but overall I've, I've performed a lot. I've done a lot of stuff with speed, any kind of performing arts thing you can think of in high school, I did. So for me to hop up in front of people, it's kind of okay. Cause I'm like, if I mess up, I mess up. They're going to laugh because if I mess up, typically I laugh. And then they'll laugh. But there are some better ways that we're going to talk about. <laughs> Six ways um, that can help you if you have a fear of public speaking. And if you do have a fear of public speaking, don't feel bad. You're not the only one. A lot of people do. Right. Right? Exactly. So the first one is um, we kind of like to play follow the leader in a way. Mm -hmm. um, when you are the presenter, your audience wants you to lead them. So they want you to take them on a journey. So just go for it. Just take them. Yeah. Take them there. And the second one, you're being read. When you're on the stage, people are watching. They're watching your body language. Are you smiling? Do you look grumpy? Are you fidgeting with your hands? Which I do. You might notice often, I fidget with my hands. I speak best in front of a podium for that reason. And I know that. So you know these things. But people are reading you. So use good body language. Smile and show that you're confident. It's a lot easier if you're talking about something you're passionate about or you know a lot, you're well educated on, you can be more confident. So if you have a, an option to choose what you're going to speak on, choose something that you're educated on. And we, you know, we right. do that. We talk about right. it like I'm we like, do. oh, I love this one. I'll do it. So mm -hmm. it's easier. And then your voice tone is a big one. Try to talk clear, make sure your pronunciation is correct. That's something that I have a problem with is my pronunciation because I've, I try to overthink my words, so mm -hmm. sometimes they don't come out um, correctly. <laughs> As Gary probably knows, he's like, ooh, another blooper coming this way. But, uh, and another thing is no gum chewing. Oh, no. No that, way. That, that's a, a no, a big no. It, another, the other, um, another one, body movement, which, <laughs> it's funny, I move around a lot, I feel like, <laughs> when I'm sitting here. It's difficult for me to sit and speak. I do really great with this. This is body movement. You know, utilize your stage. Mm -hmm. If you're on a stage and you have a microphone, oh. use the stage. <laughs> I love that. You know, you're, you start up here in the corner and then you're halfway in the middle. Yep. But don't make it look so choreographed. And that's kind of what I failed at in individual speech a lot. It would, I would practice so much. And I'm like, okay, here I'm at. Here at this word, I better be here. And by this word, I better be here. So you'd see me speed up right. to get to this X on the stage because I needed to be there by that word. T um, always try and make sure you're facing your audience. When you're walking, I almost got up and tried to do a little demonstration. <laughs> <laughs> when you're walking, you know, if you're gonna go to the back of the stage, do not turn around and walk to the back of the stage, you know? Know your stage, know what's around you, walk sideways, walk backwards. And then if you have to and you don't feel confident, record yourself. I I don't like listening to myself, but I recorded myself often, different things. And a lot of times before I do a live Facebook video, I go on, I record myself, and then I watch it, and then I go do the video. I don't know why, but record yourself. It works. Right. Get in a mirror. If you're doing a speech, that's another thing. Get in front of the mirror and try to keep eye contact with yourself because it's awkward. If you can do it with yourself in a mirror, you can do it with anyone. Exactly. And then show your emotions. Um, if you're talking about someone that are a certain subject that you have a lot of passion for, let it show. Mm -hmm. um, you know, your nervousness and everything, it, it'll disappear eventually. So just try to, um, to relax. And, um, you know, if you start laughing on emotions or if you start crying, if you look out in your audience, if the light's not shining right in your eyes, you're going to see them laughing with you. Yeah. You're going to see them wiping their sleeves on, or their eyes on their sleeves. And it's contagious. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, passion and nervousness is the two highly contagious emotions that you can present to, to your audience. And with that one, I feel like, 
express your emotion. There has been times I get up to speak and I'm like, all right, guys, I'm really nervous. Just bear with me a minute. And then <gasps> breathe. <laughs> You've let them know you're nervous already. So they know. And then you mm -hmm. breathe and you expel that nervousness when you exhale. Mm -hmm. And you feel a lot better because you're on the same page. They know you're a little nervous. You know you're a little nervous. Mm -hmm. And then you know, go away. And so listening. The audience will listen to you if you put up something on a screen, a slide deck, something like that. Read it. And paraphrasing is actually the way I want to go. Reading word for word, you tend to lose the audience's engagement. If you paraphrase what's on the slide, it keeps them more engaged, I feel like. Yeah. Um, in the previous episodes, um, I was on here with, I had the pleasure of having LaShondra mm -hmm. on here. And we were actually, when we got caught up in all the bad weather, we was leaving Oklahoma. And we were listening to Jeff Wellman. And he had some PowerPoints up there, and he owned it. Yes. I mean, he does a very good job as speaking, but then also going to his slide, his PowerPoint presentations. He does an excellent job. I just, I do recommend for people that are going to use PowerPoints or any type of electronic presentation, do not ever present off of those. Those are an assistant, an aid for your presentation. It's a reference point. So if you have a PowerPoint, you should be elaborating on what's on the screen. Yeah. And then don't be afraid because everyone is a speaker. I never thought I would be doing this. Right. You know, or, or anything remotely. And I've like met this. some of the most shy people that thought, you know, I, I can't do this. I can't do this. You know, it's back to the previous episode. You can't do it. You just got to find out what's the best for you. And I often, I do watch a lot of live Facebook videos and from various companies and you can tell the people that just started and the people that are more experienced mm -hmm. but you got to keep trying if you want to get better you have to keep on doing it keep at it or you will not get better if you're looking for any pointers on any presentation you're going to give feel free to reach out to corinne or myself or anyone here on our team and we can help you get through it you know i'll get on a live video with you <laughs> if you just want to present to me and that can be practice yeah so don't be afraid, um, you know, don't be shy about it. Just just have fun. And I actually like watching some of the new ones mm -hmm. that do their presentation because it's it makes it more real. Yes, It yeah. makes it personal, yeah. and you can connect with that person. Right, I agree. Yep. So get out there and, and, and try it. You know? it. Utilize your residents. They make good audiences. Yeah. <laughs> and they like to listen. That, that, that's engaging them. If the topic is appropriate, I guarantee you, you could go to the residence. I worked in the memory care unit mm -hmm. when I was finishing high school. So for competitive speech and stuff on a Saturday, that's what I do. Talk That'd be our them. group activity for one in the morning. I just read, to, read my speech that I was going to present because why not? And I bet you, you realized when you were doing that, how many residents actually spoke up. Yeah. And well, that's the thing. Be heard. They're not afraid to tell you what was wrong and what was right. Yeah. So if you're in front of the residents that have that ability to do that, they ain't shy. So they're going to tell you. Good. And those brutal residents, you can take it from them. <laughs> you can take it from anyone. <laughs> That's true. And I just want to put um, a question out there. Drake and I was talking about this earlier. So if you could go to um, CNA TV, hit subscribe CNA and hit TV. and hit yeah. And <laughs> hit on the segment. Um, we're gonna have a question for you. And it's the question that we were just talking about a few moments before we went on the air about why do people tell you oh. to look at your audience like they're in their underwear or they're naked? Picture your audience naked if yeah. you ever get nervous. So if someone can explain <laughs> that to us. Or in the comments, <laughs> if, you, if you do public speaking <coughs> and that's a tactic you use, I want to know what are you thinking? When you yeah. use that, not like a, what are you thinking? <laughs> but like, what thoughts are going through your mind? And in the comments below, put some tactics you use for public speaking. I was also telling, speaking before we started this episode, what I do when I'm public speaking, I did a lot of speaking engagements in auditoriums. But anyone that's been in an auditorium knows when the lights go down, what do you see illuminating all around? Red exit signs. Mm -hmm. The red exit signs are usually at a good horizon point that if you just look at them, mm -hmm. no one knows you're not looking at them. 
So it's that back door, that exit sign, but don't just stare at it the whole time. You know, you gotta look around. And a few times I'd find someone in the audience that I know and make eye contact with them, but I never, like in competitive stuff, I've never got points docked for lack of eye contact. And sometimes I was only looking at the exit signs which don't have eyes. That's I think if I... <laughs> I think if I was focusing on all the exits, I'm like, man, I can get to that one faster than I can get to that one. That, I mean, seriously, sometimes I was thinking that I'd be really nervous and I'm like looking around and that's the closest exit when I'm done that I'm going out. That's where you're going at. But I love it. I love especially speaking on things that I'm passionate about and I'm educated on because I like to share knowledge. So it works for me and I'm a talker, obviously. So <laughs> it does work for me. So we're glad that you um, tune in to watch the Chill Spot today with um, Drake and I. And like we said, please go and make a comment. We'd love to see them. Um, anyone can subscribe to CNA TV. You do not have to be a CNA. So reach out to your family, your friends, your girlfriend, your boyfriend, your mailman, whoever you want. <laughs> I wish want pets to reach could subscribe. Out to. Pets? Yeah. Yeah. Because I, 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 could, I could see a lot of pets on there watching their love ones. <laughs> Dogs are the best, you know. That's but true. Yeah, so true. thanks for watching. And until next time, remember that you matter.